We're 50 miles from two major cities and we like it that way. It's a great place to live. It's a great place to raise children. The schools are wonderful. You go to the grocery store and you know everybody there and it's, it's just a fun town. Nobody from Wilmington wrote the petition or suggested the idea. No one from one of America's most beloved small towns went to the legislature and asked for a change. No one for miles around invited a group of outside investors to launch a casino project that is tearing Wilmington apart and could leave it a divided community for generations to come. Well, the fight started for us back in June of 2007 when the My Ohio Now people came to our county commissioners and was in our local paper, small town paper, um, it, telling us that they were thinking about bringing a casino here and also uh, telling us that if we didn't want it, they would not come here. And to use their words, they said they wouldn't force it down our throats. Our contention is that people have decided three times in a row, overwhelmingly, that this is not good business for our state and for our communities, and that certainly that this proposal is by far the worst of the previous ones. It's not worthy of the Ohio Constitution, and it's not worthy of our citizens. Well, initially, when My Ohio Now came to town, they said they wouldn't go anywhere they weren't wanted. I, I don't believe that uh, Clinton County wants this project. I, I don't believe that uh, Chester Township wants this project. All over the country, when a casino comes to a city, the casino becomes the identity of the city. It's not like you're Wilmington with a casino. You are a casino that happens to be in Wilmington. It's a, it's a rural atmosphere around here. Uh, this looks like big city lights to me, even though that the backers have said that this will be a Midwestern sensibility type casino. I still don't know what that means, actually. That's their word, not mine. You're gonna have combines and tractors going up and down Route 73 because it's surrounded by cornfields. Now, is that gonna mix and, and not cause problems in that area, uh, you know, you can answer that for yourself, but I don't think it will. If indeed there's gonna be $800 million a year spent up there, that money all comes from someplace. It's not money that's manufactured in order to be spent at a casino. It's money that comes out of my pocket here in my business. It's money that comes out of Kroger's in town, all the other retailers in town. There's no way that that kind of dollars can come out of an economy and not affect everybody doing business in that economy. The casino developers are from out of state. They can't even vote in Ohio, yet they're trying to amend the Ohio Constitution and build a monstrous complex right on top of Wilmington with the promise of additional jobs for that community. We knew that we couldn't fight it alone, uh, just a local community, a handful of leaders and, and pastors and churches. We were going to have to have some help, and so we heard about AP Roundtable and, uh, and their great work that they had done in defeating these issues before, and we knew that that was the group uh, that had the ability and had the, uh, the know-how uh, and certainly has been in this fight before. We've been working together now these eight or nine months trying to uh, statewide network uh, with public officials all the way from Senator Voinovich to our local officials and uh, folks that you all have put us in contact with that we can fight this on a broader scale as a community. When we had an opportunity to have the vote no casinos down, we were glad to do that. We see that as banding together. The point of agreement is the place of power. Things happen when we agree together. We're praying together that from community leaders here and all the way through with the Vote No Casinos folks that we make this the fourth and final defeat of casino initiatives in Ohio.